Welcome to the Treasure Center. I'm Pastor Joe. I'm excited about the things God is doing in our life and in your life. I'm telling you, I am so happy you joined us this morning to watch this dynamic message. Sit down, relax, just kind of chill, you know, because God has some unique things in store for you this morning. Life changing, you hear me? I said life changing word, powerful word that's coming your way. I promise you, it will change your life, give you new direction, give you new a new outlook on what God has for you. So enjoy this powerful word. And don't forget, we're always living life in love. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> just before we start or whatever, I just want to make sure that this is part two of what I did two Sundays ago. So um, if you miss miss part one, run over to um, YouTube and check it out. It was a blessing. Amen. Uh, um, um, this is the second part of I think I did the, did the full first point. I think I have four points up under the um, the topic of um, the divine purpose behind disappointments. So um, th this morning you have walked into the lesson that's, that is the, div the divine purpose behind disappointments. And so um, the, before I get started, I do want us to understand that the, all of your disappointments are not mistakes. Some of your disappointments have been designed to make you who you are. Amen. Amen. And so uh, under, uh, as the devil wants us to look at our mistakes as if they are, they are failures and dead end roads, the Lord wants us to understand that though he has divinely put disappointments in our way. Amen. To make us who we are. So um, so then, though, I do realize that the, a lot of us are faced with a lot of things, amen. I know uh, under, since uh, COVID, we have had disappointments. We've been locked up in the, the house, and, and now that, though, under, it's sort of on the back end of it. Uh, and a lot of us are, are trying to figure out how do we re, um, re enter the world, amen. And, um, and, um, and um, so many disappointments. Our school kids have been disappointed, amen. Uh, proms was canceled. They had to do drive-by graduations, you know, for drive-in graduations. Stuff was just weird, you know what I'm saying? But the now, God, God though, is, is lifting, lifting the, removing COVID after teaching us something through COVID, amen. And so COVID didn't happen by mistake, amen. It was divine order by the Lord so that we would learn something. Amen. One thing COVID did for families was brought us back together Amen. inside the same house. At the, it forced us to be families. <laughs> Ain't God so good. Amen. And a lot of us haven't, uh, haven't ate dinner with our loved ones in such a long time. And COVID got you saying, saying this one thing. Lord, I'm tired of my family. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I just thank God for, for the disappointments that uh, he brings and for the light that he brings in disappointments. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, me and my wife, uh, if the, um, just like my granddaddy would say, if the creek don't rise um, and God's willing, well, we would have been together 27 years in August the 12th. Amen. And uh, over them 27 years, Lily, there was so many disappointments. That, that the design and shaped our marriage. I'm not sure whether we would be in the same place with the same, same mind frame if we had not had some of these disappointments. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. I, I'd have been at home and threatened and threatened to put her out. Oh, Just leave. Oh, right. She done been at home and threatened and told me, you ain't my dad. I can just leave here. You know, Going, to, going, going back and forth with each other, facing disappointments, only to reassure that God was growing us. 
Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, so y'all, y'all don't, and life, sometimes life will take a funny turn. And we will experience disappointment. So don't, don't always look at your, your disappointments, uh, disappointments as, as um, negative. But to look at them as God has a divine purpose behind this. And if we keep living long enough, God will show us his divine purpose behind our disappointments. Amen. So, um, so um, today I'm going to start with point two um, under that topic, divine purpose behind disappointments. Gracious Father, we, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we thank you, Father God, for the words that you have already prepared f for this morning. And for the things that we will cover on this morning. Open up our minds. Open up our hearts for the God. So that, the, so that we might receive your word this morning. That your word will fall on good soil. And that the, it, will, it would come into us, Father God. And do what your word was designed to do. And we thank you, Father God, just for re- storing us as we hear your word on today father god not as me but all of you father god may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight for you are my strength and my redeemer and for this i give you glory and honor it is my prayer in jesus name amen amen, amen. so um <coughs> we're going to start with um point two i like that right there behind the divine purpose behind disappointment. The divine purpose behind disappointment. Number two, we're going to start with that. I think I got three more. Hopefully I can press through this. I got enough time to press th through this because I don't want to hold you too long. Gotta, I got this. Um, um, somebody sent me this little cute little, I should pull it up and tell y'all what, what it said, like um, something about uh, under going over in church is like something uh, and almost feeling captured or something like that. I, I don't know. It was cute or whatever. So uh, uh, <laughs> I don't, don't want to hold y'all too long. I don't want to hold y'all too long. Amen. And so did somebody start the timer. Amen. I got about 35 minutes. I'm going to try to drop this in 35 minutes and let you go. Amen. Amen. So if I can get an amen, amen. and a hallelujah, it'll hallelujah. make me go, go through this thing a little, a little quicker. Amen. Can I get an Amen. Amen. It, it should make it go a whole lot faster. Amen. Divinely, divinely coming together for good. That's what I want to talk about. Divinely coming together for good. Amen. 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 <laughs> I knew. I, I knew. I'd give me some amens now. Nah, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. We know the King James version of it, but I want to I want to talk about it from the um, children's Bible version. Amen. So Jeremiah 29, 11. I got my beautiful wife with me. L.C. is in the house and she's going to help us read. And then I'm just going to talk to us. Amen. So uh, if we if we've been here long, it's because Nicole didn't read fast enough. Now I'm just picking. <laughs> I'm just picking. 11 says this. Y'all check this out. I say this because I know what I have planned for you, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. I have good plans for you. Mm -hmm. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. So then God, somebody say God, God. Has, has plans for me. for me. Period. Stop right there. Period. Stop right there. Stop right there. Don't say nothing else. That should encourage you. Well, whatever you're going through has to be a plan of the Lord. Amen. Let's solve this. God is sovereign. What does sovereign mean? All knowing, all doing. Nothing surprises the Lord. And so nothing we go through surprises the Lord. So then God has plans for our life. And I like how they digress and started talking. Plans not to hurt me. So disappointment shouldn't hurt me. Amen. Plans not to hurt me. Plans uh, to give me hope and a good future. So God's plans 
are to give me hope and a good future. God's plan is not to hurt me. God's plan is to give me hope and a good future. Amen. On uh, Romans 8. We're going to do. Um, start with verse 28 and go to verse 30 out of the NIV version. It reads like this. <coughs> and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Who Pause right there. One thing we got to make sure is that we know. You say we know. Some of the problem is some of us don't know or some of us still don't believe that God can work all things together. And so don't leave the, this place today without knowing that God is working everything for our good. Amen. Especially for those who love him. And so check out your love life and see who you are in love with. And if the Lord at the end of the day is who you are in love with, this message is for you. Go ahead, baby. Keep reading. Who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. We have a call and our call is according to his purpose. Lord, help me wrap my head around your purpose. Lord, help me wrap my head around your purpose. stuff to say about that one. That one's good right there. 29 says this. Y'all check this out. It's, it's real good. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, mm -hmm. that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So then, for those God foreknew, he also predestined. He foreknew us and he predestined us. Working together for our good. God has predestined us, and though he has, he know us, and he's predestined us. So keep that in mind. He know you and predestined things for you. In other words, he has tailor-made your life for you. That person that's getting on your nerve has been tailor-made to get you where you supposed to be. Amen. That course in school that's driving you crazy <laughs> has been purpose to make you a better person. I used to ask myself, what is geometry going to do for me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't go to the food line and use geometry. But geometry was working some kind of way to make me a better person. Amen. What is verb and noun going to do for me? You know, and I'm, and I'm saying this real lightly because of we have, I have a whole lot of good people that love school in, in here. Amen. We have, we have people that have fell in love with school. And then you have me. <laughs> Amen. You have people that have fell in love with, with school, and then you have everybody else. Amen. And so we don't really care about the ain'ts and the ain't is. And them working together and coming together to make a, a collective nice sound to people's ears. But y'all, God predestined us. And though he has a way for us to do things. Amen? Amen. Keep reading, baby. And those he predestined, mm -hmm. he also called. Mm -hmm. Those he called, he also justified. Mm. Those he justified, mm. he also glorified. Man, so when he predestined me, he called me. And so everybody's trying to figure out what, what I've been called for. If you want to know what you've been called for, go to the Lord. It's just that simple. You can't find your calling outside the Lord. Lord have mercy. And then once the Lord show you your call, to realize he's justified you in that calling. Amen. 
And so then, though, your calling is not for naught. We must not forget who God is in our life. First thing, we must not forget who God is in our life. The Bible tells us under, and it reminds us that God is Alpha and Omega. God is the beginning and he is the end, period. There ain't none before God, be none after God. God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. It's so important for us that we know that God always deals with the big picture in life. Amen? And so we are part of this big picture. We are not the big picture. Put this thing on. We are part of the big picture, but we are not the big picture. And then he is not just it's not just for our individual lives, but it's for all humanity. And so what God has purposed for you is going to help humanity, not just you. Put this thing on. And so God ain't going to just pay my bills and not help and, and, and not allow that to help me with, with the humanity. It could be hard for us to imagine while being in the midst of disappointments that anything good can come out of disappointment. Anybody, anybody there right now? I am disappointed. Somebody disappointed with, with, with your dad, disappointed with your mama, wife, husbands, kids. Amen. Just disappoint, disappointment everywhere. It could be hard for you to imagine that in disappointment that there's victory there. Is there victory in my disappointment? Or has God just got me on this plan just to destroy my life? Huh? Anybody listen at me? When my brother died, I, was, I used to ask the Lord, what am I supposed to learn from this? How can anything good come from this? And, and, it, and if you're there right now, I got good news for you, amen? You're at the right place at the right time, amen? So y'all check this out, check this out. While we were wrestling and struggling and, and, uh, and tussling with our disappointments, never forget this truth. Never forget Romans 8 says this. So we are convinced that every, this is this out of the um, total, trans, uh, total passion translation. I love it. It says, so we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan. Receive that. Get that. Get this right here. Get this part right here. We are convinced that every detail of our life is continually woven together to fit God's perfect plan. So God's up to something for him to arrange these disappointments in my life. Then it keeps saying, and it says, of bringing good into our life. For we are his lovers who uh, have been called to fulfill his divine purpose. And for the sake of time, let's skip to the, uh, the 30th verse. It says this, having determined our destiny ahead of time. God has determined your outcome ahead of time. God knows what's best for us and has, divine, and has designed our outcome ahead of time. He called us he called us to himself and, and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. So he's transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he's called. He has determined our destiny ahead of time. God has worked out my, worked out these things ahead of time. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Somebody say the divinely coming together for good. Divinely coming together for good. Somebody say divinely coming together for good. Divinely coming together for good. Man, that's what, that's what we are talking about. Divinely coming to 
together for good. Job 42, 12 through 17. I like this, y'all. Um, and we're going to, um, just for the sake of time, I want you to read 12 and then skip down to um, 16, baby. I know I got everything up there. You can read it in, in your leisure, but, but I need you to hear verse 12. But verse 12 reads like this. God blessed Job's later life, mm -hmm. even more than his earlier life. He ended up with 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, mm -hmm. 1,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. Okay, now watch this. This is after he lost everything. After he had suffered disappointments. God didn't have him go through disappointments just so he'll lose everything. So after he had went through disappointments, y'all remember it says uh, the disappointments started happening right behind each other. He, he started losing his cattle, his, um, his, um, his, his kids passed away. Uh, and, uh, he was losing things right after the other, right after the other. And let's skip down to verse 16, and it reads like this. Job lived on another 140 years, mm -hmm. living to see his children and grandchildren, four generations of them. Hey, Amen. And so Job, it wasn't over just because he was going through his disappointment. God had a lifetime for him after his disappointment. So, y'all, somebody say, there's life. There's life. After this. After this. That hit you sometime later on. Right. That hit you. That hit you sometime later on. I'm gonna live after this. Right. Four generations he lived after his disappointment. I will survive this. Yeah. I will survive this. I'm going somewhere. Y'all follow me. Y'all stay with me. Uh, under, at times we can only see our situation and issues that has been entangled in a life. Spiderweb. Sometimes that's all we can see is the situations we're in and the issues we have to deal with. It may take us a lifetime to grasp the why of God's ways. Y'all hear me? Y'all please listen to me. It may take a lifetime for us to grasp the why of God's ways. We may only understand it fully when we meet him face to face. However, we must always, somebody say always. always. We must always trust God's prudential, um, providential. providential plan for us, even when we don't understand it fully. Right. In other words, I must trust God even when I don't understand it fully. When people wrong me and God tell me to love them, I don't understand that fully. I want to rain down fire on them. Anybody? <laughs> am I the only one sometimes you just want to rain down fire on them? I just want God. I want God to do something to them. Amen? <laughs> Anybody wrong me? I want God to do something physical to them. Amen? But when God says, I have a better plan, even when it's in his provident plan for me, and I don't understand it, right. still trust it. And in trusting God's plan for us, we must realize our disappointments are, are never dead ends. It's not over because I face disappointments. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Divine purpose behind disappointments. Let's go to, to um, topic three. I got 20 minutes for t topic three. I believe I can do it. If y'all keep praying, I'll finish the topic four the next time. But let's do three. Three says divine contentment only comes from the Lord. So God's going to work everything for my good. He's going to work out everything. Everything's gonna, everything is going to come together for good. All I face is not good, but everything is going to come together for good. So when I wrecked my car, that wasn't good, but it's going to come together for good. Now, how God does that, that's above my pay grade. Something just above us. Understanding how. Huh? It's just above us. 
Number three, divine contentment only comes from the Lord. I hear people say, I'm content and don't even have the Lord. I understand. I understand. I understand. Follow me. <laughs> divine contentment only comes from the Lord. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. This is real good. John 6, 35 through 37 out of NIV reads like this. Then Jesus declared, mm -hmm. I am the bread of life. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus is, is the bread of life. The bread of life. Go ahead, baby. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Mm. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So then if I come to Jesus, I will never be hungry. Y'all, please follow me. This is going to hit you sometime at the house, and you're going to start hollering. And if I come to Jesus, I'll never be thirsty. 36 says this. Y'all follow me. Let's go. But as I told you, mm -hmm. you have seen me and still do not believe. 37. All those the Father gives me mm -hmm. will come to me. Mm -hmm. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. So I am the bread of life. In the bread of life, you go, you, you never go hungry. In the bread of life, you will never be thirsty. In the bread of life, you will never be driven away. I'm never driven away, I'm never hungry, and I'm never thirsty. In other words, I see I'm never in need with the bread of life. Psalm 37 and 4 reads like this. Take delight in the Lord, mm -hmm. and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. The first thing we do is go to the second part, and he will give us the desires of our heart, and he will give us the desires of our heart without taking delight in the Lord. you got to take delight in the Lord. you got to like doing kingdom things. Oh, Lord Jesus. you got to like doing kingdom things. Even when it's work. You don't hear me. Just the other day, me and my wife had plans to, to go get that furniture. I had committed myself to do kingdom work first. Now, I could have, we could have went over there. We could have went and left early Friday and not been here to do kingdom work. But the kingdom was calling. And so I came to do kingdom work. Then I left to take care of what God wanted, God was going to bless me with. Right. Amen? Right. Because my, my mama told me, excuses are, it's, it's a lie. It's the meat of a lie wrapped around the skin of reasoning. That's what I, that's what excuses are. You done, you done found a reason not to listen and obey. Somebody say 99, 99. and a half, and a half. Just, won't just won't do. Now just say out, say out, say out, because ain't none of us there. Ain't none of us there. Amen. We all in need. Amen. Amen. So y'all, when we, we first got to take the light in God's work. Joy doing God's work. What's God's work? Lord, I might not even finish this here. What's God's work? Raising your kids. God's work. And I know when we live in this age of technology and to give our kids these tablets just to get them quiet. Guess what got us quiet? Guess what got me quiet back in the day? I ain't lying to you. Guess what got me quiet? Richard, Clarence, Miller, Senior said, sit there and be quiet. That's all it took. I wonder if that still works today. And, and y'all, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Y'all smart now. We got some educators in here now. Hmm? That no better ways of doing things, Cole. Now, old school get results. New school get kids jumping on parents. It's time to go back to the old school. Because some of these disappointments that kids face, good for them. 
Bible said, being the sap while it's young. Huh? <laughs> I can't be in nay now. That's why I <laughs> bent her tail before. Stand up. Wave your hand. That's the one I bent before. Whooped her tail when she was little. Huh? I started bending her when the, she was little. Can't bend her now at 24. Too late to bend her now. I got to start bending her. Ooh. Ooh. And you know what, though? And don't be so disciplined to where you don't know how to embrace either. There's a time for both. There's a time to discipline and there's time to embrace. We got too many people. That's why, that's why, uh, 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 um, but what is this, um, on the female track, um, what is, um, human trafficking. That's why people are taking, talking teenage females out of their houses and got them prostituting them because people at home are not showing both. And maybe you discipline, maybe you love him, but the, you don't, you ain't giving them Jesus. This thing on? Huh? Maybe you ain't been praying with them. Maybe you eat by yourself and they eat somewhere else. Now y'all, I ain't, I'm just going to tell y'all the way we actually done it. When it was time to eat, in the middle of town, mama says, time to eat. All you heard was, Everybody sitting down. You don't hear me. And guess what, though? Dinner time taught us. There's a time we came together and talked about anything. You know, he started telling us about, about sex. He asked us a question one day, where does babies come from? Lord, I don't think I was eight. Then I, said, I know where babies come from. That's right, y'all. I was a fast one. I was a fast <laughs> lover. Y'all hit me. I was a fast learner. And so my daddy said, where babies come from? Guess what I told him. I said, Daddy, you, st you stuck your penis in mama's vagina seven times, and now you got kids. Now, y'all, I went too far off, but I wasn't right either. And never, uh, uh, uh. My daddy told me later on, it was some practicing going on, son. I went hitting the home run every time. Huh? And so that's what misunderstandings are, um, are the, um, really, really addressed there. That's where, the, um, that's where um, we went to, uh, at the dinner tables where we started talking about family stuff, and we knew the vision of where the house was going. And so because that, my dad believed like, uh, like the Jeremiah. As for me and my house, or that Joshua? Joshua. That's Joshua. For, as, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Huh? Then he put us <laughs> in that station wagon and took us to church. When the last time you took your kids to the church instead of sending them? Huh? Too many people sending their kids places. Wow. And they're just taking the light, light and how God, God's concerned about our life. Right. Yeah. It's me waking up in the morning and seeing how good Nicole look and saying something. Instead of seeing how good she look and never saying nothing. And then wondering why she's smiling at work because all the men at work telling her, oh, look how good she look. And she come home and she throwing pots. <laughs> and, I, and I'm trying to figure out, I ain't did nothing to you. Matter of fact, I ain't said nothing to you. That's the problem. You ain't said nothing to them. You didn't get them from, we didn't get them not saying nothing to them. 
I used to tell her all the time, dating, how good she looked. Because she had something I wanted. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Huh? And so then, though, we lose our communication skills when it comes down to giving something we desire. I'm still talking about taking delight in, in, in the way God wants us to live life. And so my question is, what are you teaching your child? Because whether you believe it or not, they're watching everything you do. I'm not lying to you. I watch my daddy so much. I, I find myself doing things that I never that I said I never do. Huh? Wearing hats every time I leave the house. What that mean? I just saw it. Going to work early. <laughs> Lord, I knew, boy, I knew I'd get some squirrels then when I start my going to work early. Nah, I'm going to be to work just in time. <laughs> if that's how you want to handle your life, then live your life. Amen. Amen. Somebody asked me one day, why do you go to work early? Guess why I go to work early? Because I thank God for what he gave me. I go to work early not cause my, because work is good. I go to work because God is good. Anybody here hearing what I'm saying? I don't go to work just to show off in front of people. I go to work because I thank God for giving me a job. And so if he see how dedicated I am on, on this job, if this job so happened to let me go, he'll find me another job. Right. And I go on that job early. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get through this thing, y'all. Uh, um, I need to, I really need to drop this on y'all. Y'all please listen, listen at this. In the age of this, in this age that the, we live in now, in this age, we all are our own, everybody's on social media. Everybody is. We're scrolling through what seems like other people's Endless achievements and adventures. Have you ever been scrolling through Facebook and say, wow, they did that? Wow, they went there? Y'all y'all, please listen to me. Y'all please listen. And we look at our own lives and we see ordinary. We see boring. We see a mess. And we see brokenness. But when we look on social media, we see adventure. We see people traveling. You know, in other words, everybody ain't putting everything on their life on them Facebook. <laughs> oh, Lordy, which makes us want to buy into the idea of what if, or wonder if, wonder if, wonder if, wonder if, and it goes something like this. Wonder if I had this amount of money. One day if I could buy a house in X neighborhood. One day if I had X as my significant other. Huh? Lord Jesus had me sitting here wondering if I could have, <laughs> if I could have Gabriel Union as my significant other. Just, just strolling through social media, I had your question where you at. It'll have you wondering if you can live in that neighborhood or, or if I can have that kind of significant other. Wonder if I could travel to X country. You see people putting in there, they've been to England. They've been to England. They've been to France. Been to Paris. Jamaica. And you ain't been nowhere but Greensboro. <laughs> and got you wondering why life Ain't so good to me. You don't hear me. Wonder if I could get that kind of job that would pay me six figures. Anybody ever wondered if? Wonder if. Wonder if I didn't have to wake up. And uh, this one for, 
for my daughter. One day if I didn't have to wake up and stick myself. One day if. One day if. Then it could. Then, then if I had the ex, I would be content. So what Facebook has fooled us into believing that all their adventures, they content now. At times, it seems contentment is just out of our reach. Something that we're chasing around like a dog chasing his tail. Never really catching it. Just spinning around. Never really catching it. But, but I came to bring you good news, y'all. I came to bring you good news. Only divine contentment is found in the Lord. Not in Hawaii. Not, not living in Buena Vista. Not having a six-figure job. Not driving a Rolls a Rolls Royce. Not having a Rolex. True contentment is only found in the Lord. I can have a Rolls Royce. I can live on top of the mountain and still have disappointments. I can have all my cabinets filled with food. All my kids listening to me. My job is doing everything I want and still be disappointed. Only true contentment is found in the Lord. That's why mama went wrong with, 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 with that one song that they would always sing. That's why I would trust in the Lord till I die. And as hard as it is, I'm going to treat all, I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right because I trust in the Lord. So be not deceived while you're strolling on Facebook and everybody's showing you all their happy times. I just wish America would just be honest with you. That the, when they was out there on on the uh, on the ocean, on that nice ship, how many times they started arguing with each other? How many times they fell out with each other? How many of them had motion sickness and couldn't enjoy the first three days? You don't hear me. Nobody's nobody's really um, uploading disappointments. Nobody's really. Um, making famous disappointments. Right. Only picture you see with me and Nicole are happy pictures. I ain't going to show you that picture when she did me like this. <laughs> Negro, please. Huh? Or when she was looking at me like this. <laughs> I wish you would. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Nobody. It's uploading disappointments. So guess where I can't find contentment at? Strolling through Facebook. People are have you disappointed. Because you'll go in search of con contentment in all the wrong places. And you'll find yourself when you get back wondering why did I go? when you had contentment all along. I know people can make things look real attractive. You don't hear me. Do y'all understand that, that it's the enemy's job to make disobedience look attractive? Do, do y'all understand that Adam and Eve had it all and the enemy came in and started talking in their ear? Hmm. Making things feel attractive. Huh? This is the graduating season. And some of us wish that we had went to school. And we get on Facebook and you see people getting their masters. Some getting their doctorates. 
some getting a bachelor's in unit, and they just look content. Only to find out after getting all that, true contentment is only found in the Lord. That's why you can have somebody driving a trash truck for 30 years. Happy. And you find somebody else jumping out a window after winning the lottery or the, after winning a beauty pageant. We're struggling with things. And I'm trying to tell you the answer is never horizontal. The answer is vertical. I am done. I don't care what your heartaches are. I don't care what your disappointments are. True contentment is only found in the Lord. In the Lord. I'll be honest with y'all and then I'm done. I love Nicole. I really do. I think she, I think she was the one God designed for me. But the, guess what Nicole can't do for me? The things God can do for me. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's some stuff that, that, that Nicole can't tell me I can't do. It is. It's some stuff that the, she can't persuade me not to do. And so that's why I make people head spin when I tell them stuff like this. You better love God more than you love your significant other. And y'all, I'm going to be honest with you, I love God more than I love Nicole. And though he teaches me how to love her correctly, my love for him makes me a better husband. And though I get it, y'all. I've been praying to, to the Lord too, been asking Him for some increase. You hear what I'm telling you? I've been asking Him for some, and I don't mean I don't mean to, to um, extend my house. I mean increase in that bank account. But y'all, I'm gonna be honest with you. When you ever do it, it won't it won't replace what I do for Him and what He does. So, so I don't know what life finds you at at this moment. Even at this moment, whenever you listen to this, even on Facebook or YouTube, I don't know where you are at at this particular moment. But I speak life into your soul right now. And I tell you, only divine commitment, contentment comes from the Lord. True contentment. To be satisfied only comes from the Lord. And y'all, I don't mean to talk nasty in the church, but, but the, because some people think this talking nasty in the church. Sex is not con contentment. Sex is like a drug. You're half of that moment, then it goes. That's why... We have chronic smokers. But though, if that was the answer, then once you finish smoking one time, you, you should be fine. It's not in these things. Contentment is never horizontal. It's never horizontal. Only true contentment comes from the Lord. May God bless and keep you is our prayer for we live in life in love. God bless you. What a wonderful word we heard this morning. I know you were blessed by it. I know I was. But beyond after you get that word, there's always another step to re receiving the word that we received on today. If you've never accepted Christ as Lord in your life, this is a grand opportunity for you to do so. It's very easy and simple if you believe in your heart, 
confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. That is Romans 10, 9, and 10. So at this time, if anybody that's listening in wants to, want to accept Christ as Lord, it only takes those steps. You confess him with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you be saved. And if you've done that or if you desire to do that, then we can do that right now. I want to pray with you a prayer of salvation and that will seal your conviction and your con confession. And from there, allow God to lead and guide you to the next place in life. Father God, we come before you. We thank you, God, for any of those that have decided to make you as Lord of their lives. And God, all you said from Romans 10, 9 and 10, that we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we can be saved. That's all it takes. So we ask you right now, Father God, for, all, for any of those, for anybody that has made that confession, for you to walk with them and guide them in their new life experience with you. And we will forever give you glory, honor, and praise. Now have a blessed week, and now I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. We pray that this message has been an extreme blessing to your life. Please also consider joining us every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. for our Morning Glory Corporate Prayer on Free Conference Call. You can also join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our refuel service, which is held on Zoom. Every first Thursday, we will have intercessory prayer at 7 p.m. on Free Conference Call. So make sure you join us then as well. Here are three ways to give. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on Facebook as well as YouTube. Well, Team Trinity, remember, we love you. Have a great week.